Well, 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 it's been a hot minute. I actually don't remember the last time I recorded. 16th of July, shit, sorry, that's been a long time. Every time I record an episode, I'm like, I promise I'll be back on it, and I just, I am in on it. <laughs> so, God, it's nearly been a month. I am soz, guys. It's been a hectic time recently. Um, so the last episode I recorded was how I'm really feeling about coming off prep. So I feel like it's been, how many weeks has it been now? It has been... Da, da, da. officially now I had my final photo shoot just two weeks ago um but the week before that or two weeks before that was when I was in I meant, meant to initially finish prep um and I had my friend's hen doing between that so yeah it feels like it officially ended obviously a couple of weeks ago but we had bits and bobs in between um now yeah I kind of said in the previous episode I was really nervous about coming off prep um, for various reasons if you haven't listened to it you can go back and listen but do you know what it's actually been fine it's been fine and the first week after I just I had so much energy because I had so <laughs> more food you know I was I had so much flexibility and it just it felt so nice to have some extra carbs again and it was just obviously my body just needed it so much um so after the um second shoot which was amazing um shot with Matt Marsh he's amazing had a really really good time my friend Anna and I stayed in a spa for the night and just properly pampered ourselves and had lots of Prosecco a three-course meal it was absolutely lush so that was really nice um a nice way to kind of celebrate the end of prep um and yeah my stomach is back to normal now so like it can digest foods again um because let me tell you my god (laughs) When you've been on prep and you've been having like the same or similar meals and similar foods, your body obviously gets used to those. So when you chuck something else in the mix you haven't had for a while, your body's like, mm, absolutely not, mate. Um, so yeah, that just goes to show how important variety is, right? Um, but yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Like I won't lie, at the start of this week I felt shit because my period started. So I felt like that bloated horrible way and just tired and ratty. Um, but now that it's gone, I feel wonderful <laughs> and I'm on slightly higher food. So the plan of action now, or has been already, increasing my food pretty much back up to maintenance. So I'm about a kilo up um, from my lowest weigh-in, which was about four weeks ago now, because my weight went up a little bit after um, my friend's hen do, and it came back down a little bit, but not fully, fully all the way down. Um, so yeah, kilo up, pretty decent um extra food which is lovely and um, definitely got a lot more energy for training and running which is nice um and yeah the plan is to just basically give me a little bit extra food until probably around about early to mid September and then we're going to be doing a bit of a mini cut pre Dubai now I know what you're thinking like Danny why the hell are you cutting again you don't need to no I don't I absolutely don't I really don't need to um however my friend Anna and I are doing a desert shoot in Dubai which is really fucking exciting um so any body fat that I do gain between now and kind of early to mid-September I'll just essentially be dropping that and it probably won't be very much to be honest like if I do this reverse right and I don't eat like a dick (laughs) which I haven't been um I should only gain a a couple of kilos like two three kilos max so to lose that I can lose that pretty quickly um and just get back to to kind of where I was um so I'm still feeling I am still I'm still very lean I'm still you know pretty much holding my composition even just a kilo heavier um but that is that is the aim and we're just going to kind of see how how I get on over the next kind of four weeks is it one two three four four or five weeks then gauge as to when um we start that prep just so that I can still feel lean and um you know confident going into the shoot in Dubai then I need to have a break from dieting from quite a long time because I think I said this before you cannot be dieting forever and interestingly this actually leads me into a topic of what I wanted to speak about today because I had a really good call with one of my clients the other day and she is such like all of our clients are high achievers right and this is what I'm like as well and you just want you just always want more for yourself you are so driven you are so ambitious and you just want to keep pushing you're constantly looking for the next thing you know you're capable of more right now this particular client has made an insane amount of progress in the past four months since she joined us right but she's like 
I, I want to keep losing. I want to keep losing. I'm like, yeah, but right now she's got a lot of stressors going on. She broke up with her partner. She's moved house. Her job's insanely stressful. She's had a lot of things going on. Her sleep has been awful. Um, and she's now started craving like sugary foods, understandably so. She's been dieting for, I think we've done about, we actually extended it a bit because she was away um, for a period of time. So about 14 weeks, which is longer than what I would normally diet somebody, usually. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so she she was saying, you know, I want to keep pushing, I want to keep pushing. But I was like, you know, your body's pushing back at you now and you're heavily stressed, you're craving sugary foods. Now that is a sign that your adherence is starting to drop and that you actually just need to take a step back because you can't be dieting forever. But she's like, no, like, Danny, I've still got body fat I want to lose. Like, I could be doing more. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. But this isn't the end of your journey. Just because we're ending the fat loss phase doesn't mean this is the end of your journey. And I just think it's important to highlight this, right? As a high achieving woman, you do, you always want more and you always want better and you always want to challenge yourself and see what you can do and evolve, which is an incredible thing. But it also becomes a not so incredible thing when you're not giving yourself that little bit of a leeway. Like you cannot be dieting forever. You just can't. It's not good on your body. And you'll get to a point, and this is what most people, the mistake most people make is that they are just constantly, constantly dieting. And they feel like they're constantly dieting as well. As in, what I mean by that is like, you never really feel like you're getting a break, you know? And you can't be consistent with it. If you're if you're constantly dieting, you're never going to be consistent. If it's just like, if you're dieting all year round, and a lot of people do, the yo-yo back and forth, you know? And yeah, it's important you take a break from it. It's really important. So this is what I was trying to say to my client, you know, you need to trust me, which she does, but she's like, I want more, I want more. I'm like, yes, but we need to take a step back right now. Give you a bit of a reset, be a bit more present, a bit more freedom, flexibility, a bit more food. Just allow your sleep to improve, allow your stress to improve. That's something we really need to focus on with her. And actually just enjoying a little bit more food overall. Um... And she was quite resistant. And I think as a driven woman, we can be, you know, we really can be. And this is how I felt coming off prep. I was like, oh, I don't want to come off prep. I'm scared. Like, a, you know, not scared of gaining weight, just scared of, for me, it was the emotional side of things because obviously prep really saved my mental health. But I guess there was probably part of me that was like, no, I'd, I'd love to maintain my physique right now because I feel great. But at the same time, I need more food. I cannot be on these calories and have this expenditure forever. It's just not sustainable. My expenditure was so high. My calories weren't even that low, but my expenditure was super high. <laughs> um, and you know what? I only realized how tired I was when I got given more carbs. And I was like, whoa, I have so much energy. And I was like, damn. Um, and then started sleeping better and things again, you know? So it's just so important. So I just wanted to throw that in there because a lot of women that I speak to, They've been dieting like their whole life. And it's no wonder they struggle. It's because it's all they've ever known, you know? But at the same time, like even just calling it a diet, like I actually don't even like the word diet. I hate it, but I have to to explain what I'm talking about. But seeing it as a diet makes it sound and feel even more restrictive. Do you know, when you just kind of implement it as like a lifestyle change, it just feels so much more relaxed. You know, it's not putting that pressure, that overwhelming feeling on yourself of, oh, I have to, have to lose weight, I have to eat less, I have to move more. And this is another topic that I kind of wanted to lean into today. Like another one of our clients and quite a few of our clients struggle with that self-sabotaging mindset. Now, with self-sabotage, this is so common, right? But the reason most people self-sabotage is because like they they feel uncomfortable right they feel uncomfortable doing something that they're not used to so they end up going back to their default which is the self-sabotaging mindset whatever it may be it might be um usually it's surrounded by food right so sabotaging by emotional eating or whatever it may be right but that's because that's all they've ever known and that's comforting to them so when you actively try and do something that doesn't naturally or isn't naturally part of your lifestyle or a habit there's resistance there, right? But also, if you're saying to yourself, I have to do this, I should do this, I should be doing this, and you're being really, really fucking hard on yourself, again, 
you're going to have resistance there because nobody wants to be told or feel like they have to do something or should do something. That's like a lot of pressure, right? But if you flip that and say, I could do this, you know, I could go for a walk. I could go to the gym. I could do my meal prep. It's basically promoting like an opportunity kind of mindset. And like, even just, probably just even you hearing that, it makes you think differently, right? Like, I could do this, I could do that. You have the option rather than I should do this. Someone says you should do that, you should do that, you should be doing this. No, <laughs> you know? It's like, I don't know about anyone else, but I used to fucking hate school because I used to hate to be told what to do. So if someone's going to tell me what to do, like, depending on what it is, there, there will be resistance there. You're like, oh, I don't want to do that. But if you're like, well, actually, I could do that. It's going to benefit future me, then it's a whole different ballgame. And what we've been working on with this particular client, aside from that mindset reframe, is I've been getting her to, each time there's a bit of resistance there. And she's like, oh, I can't be arsed going to the gym. Like, I might just go home and do this and that, whatever. I've said to her, as soon as you have that negative mindset I want you to send me a message right away tell me what the negative thought is and I want you to actively reframe it into I could and how it's going to benefit future you and it's worked a whole week this week she's managed to get to the gym like three times she's been so much more in control of her nutrition and that is just we're only on Friday it's not even been a full week so like just a small shift in mindset like that can go a long way so Try that the next time you have like a self-sabotaging thought arise. Don't say to yourself, I should do this. I should do that. Think of future you and how future you would react. What are her actions and behaviours? What, what do you want from that person that you're becoming? Would she go to the gym? She probably would. Would she do her meal prep? She probably would. Would she go out to do steps in the range? Yes, yeah, she would. She fucking would. So it's, it's down to you to show up as that version of her. Like the actions that you take today benefit future you. Tomorrow, the day after, the day after, for months, weeks, years to come. And this is what I think to myself when I feel like I can't be arsed going to the gym or doing whatever. I'm like, well, Danny, you're going to feel so fucking good afterwards and proud of yourself. I never want to go out for a run. I never... <laughs> ever want to go out for a run guys like I've said this before like running does not come naturally to me it doesn't and this is why oh, just be a piece of fluff there um this is why I want to do it to get better at it and I've obviously gotten a lot better at it but I'm still not I'm still not great at it it doesn't come easy to me I never look forward to going to <laughs> going for a run I'm always like fuck I've got to go for a run but I do it because I feel fucking great afterwards and the version of me the the future me the version that I want to become who I kind of already am but even more so is fucking discipline she shows up for herself you know and I've got I've still got goals I'm still working on myself and they're not going to get done themselves if I just sit and be like nah, I'm not going to go run today I have to fucking get them done do you know and I think like the sessions and the things that you don't want to do when you do them they're just you feel so much more proud of yourself you know, like you just feel so much more rewarded because you've shown up for yourself. And it's those very days and those very actions and behaviours that you take that help you build that belief and confidence in yourself because you're sticking to those promises that you said you would. So, yeah, I feel like I've went off on a bit of a tangent there, but that's quite normal for me. But hopefully you found that helpful. And um, also speaking of runs yesterday... I had a 5k run to do, finished the run, and then when I was walking, me, who's got jelly ankles from being a dancer back in the day, I used to go over them all the fucking time, was just walking, not even running, my ankle just like popped, like keeled over, completely fell, <laughs> buckled to the floor, and I've got a massive cut, if you're on YouTube right now, you can see my cut, it's absolutely disgusting, look at that, I've put like antiseptic on it, but it's still hideous, and my ankle's like, bruised and swollen and I've got one of my best friend's weddings tomorrow and I have to wear heels so can we all just send some healing vibes to my ankle so that I can actually walk that would be wonderful and dance more importantly come on like I mean I'll dance on my bare feet if I have to it's fine but yeah not a fucking great timing <laughs> um but I got it done and at least it happened after the run and not before the run or during the run right so hey ho um 
but yeah um i hope i hope that's helped um in terms of like an update on just life from me aside from prep and kind of focus moving forwards like i have been so busy the last few months like i think i said this before like obviously running the business um we've got our our big event 2.0 in october which is super exciting we've secured a really sick beautiful location for it um we've got a couple of other meets in the diary over the next few months um and we are also planning something really really big for next year mm, i can't wait to share with you it's gonna be fucking mega um so that's been going on and then alongside that i actually work for another couple of mentors helping other coaches grow their fitness businesses which i really love um so i'm doing a lot <laughs> just now but it's the way that I like it. I like being super busy. I actually work better and more efficiently when I'm busier and when I'm a bit, bit under pressure. I just work so much better. Um, so yeah, this is why I've been so inconsistent with the podcast and the YouTube because like I do have time in the day, but it's very sparse for stuff like this. Um, so this is the first kind of day I could actually find the time to, to do it. Um also, just want to give you a little time scheduling hack because I feel like not enough people do this and I can't understand why. If you're not using Google or iPhone calendar, like what are you, how, how are you surviving? How? Like, I honestly, like when people say they don't have time, I'm like, do you actually not have time though? Because like, if you were to put everything on a calendar, I bet you there'd be a little bit of time there. Right, I am so fucking busy just now and I'm still making time for myself and for doing other bits and bobs, seeing family and friends, right? And whilst it's difficult, I'm making it fucking happen because it matters, right? But honestly, what I'd suggest you do is write down your non-negotiables, your daily non-negotiables, your work tasks, your training times, your lunch times, your break times, everything and schedule everything into your calendar and give it a time slot and colour code it if you like okay because this is what I do honestly if I could show you my calendar like it's just like filled but I it's beautiful <laughs> like without it I would be fucking lost like because I have to have like I've got like obviously stuff for my own business so I've got staff meetings I've got client calls I've got consult calls I've also got client calls with the mentorships that I work for I've got meetings with them I've got my own training to do I've got my own steps to do I've got lunch to have I've got meal prep to do. like there's so much if I don't get that in my diary am I fucking any of it done <laughs> like so if you're not time scheduling or whatever you want to call it please do it because I bet you have more time than you realize and you're probably wasting a lot of time as well like you know, like I know I used to, I mean, we all procrastinate, right? I still procrastinate to this day. Um, but yeah, I just, I think more and more people need to do that. Genuinely, it's an absolute fucking game changer. Um, but yeah, there's a few pieces of uh, useful information in there for y'all. You You're so very welcome. Um, I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's probably enough. I'm going to stop talking now because we're almost 20 minutes in. And that's a decent chunk of time for me, I feel. <laughs> um, well, actually, before we go, I'm not going to stop yet. Um, if you're listening to this, then I just want to let you know about our um, Thriving 3 group coaching programme. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, Thriving 3 is our 12 week group coaching programme, which is designed to help you kickstart your fat loss and transform your body and mindset. OK, um, now the difference between Thriving 3 and our one to one coaching is obviously Thriving 3 is group and one to one is a lot more personalised now. With Thriving 3, you are still going to get access to your own coach where you'll have check-ins every two weeks um, and your nutrition will be personalised. Your training plan is not personalised, but you will have the choice of either gym or home or a mixture of the two. You do not have to be an experienced gym goer. You can be a complete beginner or you can be an experienced gym goer. There's so many plans to choose from. Um, and over the 12 weeks, we heavily educate you on a number of different topics surrounding nutrition, surrounding staying on track in social occasions, intuitive eating and um, stuff around banishing self-doubt and self-sabotage um, learning more about your training and techniques and stuff like that. Um, and we have group calls, Q&As, like there's so much in there. The last intake like blew up and the girls had such got such amazing results um and the community was just epic so you get access to all of that and let me just say it's a fucking great price if I do say so myself um 
So if you've if you've even considered one to one before and you think you feel like you're not quite ready for it yet and you just kind of want to get an insight into how coaching works and you're stuck in a rut with your diet just now, you're kind of yo-yoing back and forth, you're not making any progress with your fat loss and you're just like banging your head against a brick wall, that is exactly why we designed Thriving 3. Okay, so it just gives you a taster of what coaching is like in a group capacity. Still getting those check-ins with your coach every second week, just not as in-depth as one-to-one. Um, and then, yeah, you just basically get a taster for it and you'll get sick results from it as well. Okay, if you implement everything that we teach you, you will get great results in that in those 12 weeks. And then we choose three winners to come along to... I say this time, this time we might choose more. So last time for the July photo shoot, we chose three winners to come along to the photo shoot. But this time we might... Um, depending on numbers we might invite a bit more people to come to our Christmas party at the end of the year because we're not doing a shoot it'll be a Christmas party so you'll get an invite to that um, so yeah basically if you want more information I'm going to put a link in the do you call it a bio? what do you call it here? I don't know the info description I'm going to put the link there so you can um, uh, see more information see what the cost is and everything like that and also join the wait list because you have to be on the wait list to receive the link to sign up. And we do have a limited number of spaces because we only have a limited number of coaches. So there's not gonna be like 50, 60 spaces. Um, it is limited. So if you are interested, please click the link, sign up to the wait list and you'll be kept in the loop as to when spaces go live. It'll be Friday the 6th of September. Um, it'll be live for 40 hours only. And then we start on Monday the 9th. So yeah. Shameless little plug there. Anyway, I'm going to go now. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I'll speak to you all soon.